<laughs> Many have players been speaking out this week after Chelsea's Champions League exit. Thiago Silva sent a message to Chelsea's owners. Here's what he had to say. He said, I think the first step has been made, an incorrect step, but it has been made. We had to increase the size of the changing room because it didn't fit the size of the squad. The manager can only pick 11 from a squad of 30-something. That's tough. We need to stop and put a strategy in place. Otherwise, next season, we could make the same mistakes. We have had three managers this season, plus a fourth with Bruno, where we failed to win. Everybody talks too much about replacing managers. I think we, as players, must also take responsibility. Mario, do you agree? Yeah, because you look, now you've got a player that's very experienced. You have seen it all. So it's not like someone is just uh, blatantly coming out and having a go at certain things. He also, he's part of the team. He sees things and he feels a certain way. So that's why he's speaking his mind. So that's the only reason that I would, would uh, understand what he means. Like, you can, you can sack managers. You can, you can put in a lot of money in the club. But it's going to take time. Kate, okay, last week you asked me this question and uh, I said, yeah, it's not like people should not be focusing on like next season. It's going to be a great season for Chelsea. No, it's going to be a build-up season for them. Because if you want them to uh, straight away go at it and start winning things, oh, it never happened. Even the first time when Chelsea got bought before that time, uh, you know, uh, Boyle came in, when... Um, um, uh, what is his name? Uh, the first time he bought it... Uh, um, but the first time I bought it was by the Russian owner. And then it was also the same thing we were going through. We were, financial, we were in financial troubles because then people were worried about if they were going to get paid. And then after the club got bought, but that situation took us a lot of time. And then later in 2003, 2004, we turned second. And the year after that, they won the league. So, guys, it's a journey of building. But the only thing that uh, Silva is saying, we got to understand now that we have to calm down and really work what we have now. If we keep on doing craziness, we're not ready for the show. Nadim, you've been through an ownership change at a club. How tough is it to adapt as a player to all what's going on around you? Um, I think it can be tough, but the nature of the ownership changes could ultimately play into it as well. But then it's that strategy which Thiago Silva was mentioning. I think they've brought so many players in that having to extend lockers and stuff like that. That's not a healthy situation to be in as a football club when you really don't even have enough p places to sort of invite people in. And Thiago Silva himself, you know, he's, he's 39 years old by the end of this year. He's seen a lot of football in his time and a lot of players, and he must know that the environment in there isn't a great one. And the point he makes about how people are frustrated every week when they're not playing, I think some managers have it bad when it's three or four players, but for the manager of Chelsea, you're looking at 10 plus players, that doesn't look good. I think if we all knew what the strategy was supposed to be, then maybe we could sort of like semi-justify if we're sort of pro-Chelsea as such. But instead we look and they have so many players, so much discontent, and they're just not playing well. I think, as I say, he's seen a lot of it. He sees the sort of intricate nature of it on a day-to-day -day basis. It's literally not working at all. And when things don't work, the idea is usually, oh, maybe we'll get some more players. That's the last thing that they need. I think they need to sort of figure out what the long-term strategy is. But then ironically, the long-term strategy probably won't feature Thiago Silva because surely they're not planning on having him as a pillar in their team when he's in his 40s. But it's a really weird spot for Chelsea. I say new ownership coming in, it does change the mentality a little bit. But I think this feels excessive, especially for a team that didn't need to have a, such a heavy level of investment so quickly, given the fact that they weren't a million miles away beforehand anyway. I suppose if they don't get a strategy in place, Stevie, it's just going to be risking another very difficult season next not year. Unless they get, it's not that it's not that they don't have a strategy. They've got a strategy. It's just the wrong one. <laughs> the strategy <laughs> wants to go and buy as many players as we can. Then there'll be none left for anybody else. You know, it, it's it, it, he sounds like an old pro, Silva, because that's what an old pro would do. We need to take responsibility as players. Well, the players can only take so much responsibility. Look, you wouldn't go and play a game without a goalkeeper, would you? I mean, it sounds how stupid does that sound? But I tell you what, Chelsea's gone out and bought 20 players and never bought a guy that can put the ball in the net. So you're playing without <laughs> somebody who can score a goal. So it's, it's, it's as simple and straightforward as that. Yes, you get a strategy, but you've got to get the right one. And so far, nothing they've done has worked. Absolutely zero. And I keep bringing it up, the three guys who are supposed to be the directors of football have spent a lot of money and made a complete and utter almighty mess of it. If not one of them could spot the fact that they needed to get somebody in
to score goals, then I'll tell you what, I don't know what they're getting paid for. Can they do anything with what's left of the season, Shaka, to at least shed a bit of a positive light on what could be ahead next season? Oh, okay. <laughs> we're trying to have some positivity Here's today that, on the show, Shaka. I realise that. <laughs> I'm not sure how I make this positive. Um, Come on, Shaka, make it positive. I want to hear all right, it. Let, let, all, right, all, right, all right. What's going to get better um, between now and the end of the season? Start scoring. Do Weather's going to get who, nice who? and warm, the weather. Who's oh. going to do that? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. The weather's going to get nice. You can work on your <laughs> golf game. I'm not sure how else I'm going to make this positive. Listen, I, in all honesty, I, I, I'm, I'm as bemused as, as, as anybody around Chelsea's and, and Todd Bowley's strategy or, or lack of it. When he came in, he said he was going to recruit and, and build for the future and wanted to sign young players and, and rather ridiculously put them on seven and, and eight year contracts which, which makes no footballing sense and even so while that, this is what you're seeing you're building for the future you're sacking managers every couple of months your best two players are, are, are uh tiago silva and ngolo Kante. when when he's fit they are the wrong side of 35. so nothing about the supposed strategy that he's trying to tell us about makes is it makes any sense or looks realistic at all um Right now, the only only thing I can say is that we're closer to the end of the season than, than we are to the start. <laughs> so therefore, you get to do this all over again come this summer. That's the stretch. Nadim, can you offer up any hope? I can, I can, because history might be repeating itself. And if you remember, I think it was when Leicester won the Premier League, it was because Chelsea beat Spurs. And then if you remember, when Liverpool lost the league, it was when Chelsea beat them at Anfield. So given the fact that Chelsea have to play Man City and Arsenal this season, I think from their own perspective, even though they've been very poor this season, they can still have a say in terms of who wins the Premier League title. And if they win one or both of those games, a very long, terrible season might give you that little bit of hope going into the next year that maybe you're not as far away as people perceive you to be because you can compete against the best two sides in the division. And don't get me wrong, the other side of that coin is like, it's a disaster, blow it up. But... The potential is there, and I'll be very interested to see how they perform against both sides. There to, you go. I have to admit, I have no idea what Nadim just said. I have no idea what Nadim just said, but I'm feeling really beat positive. The beat the teams in the title race, beat the big boys, and you just offer a bit of hope up for what could be ahead. Some, somehow Get Leicester some got a mention. I have no idea Get what Leicester is doing anything. What's the most Ow. important is, is the former... <laughs> <laughs> is, the, got a <laughs> is the former Chelsea player buying Nadam's theory? What is he doesn't know what it is. Yeah, what is Nadam's theory? I, I, let me try again. Let me try again. He was going to the top fact. Okay, let Nadam start let Nadam start again then. Okay, stick with me, stick with me. So when Leicester won the Premier League title, their yeah. closest competitor was Spurs. And Leicester won the league after Chelsea beat Spurs, yeah? Even though Chelsea were off the pace. So that was yeah. their say in that Premier League title race. And then a few years later, Man City going head-to-head -head with Liverpool, and it's the game where Steven Gerrard slipped. Slips. Then Baba ran through and scored. So again, Chelsea right. weren't in that title race, but they beat a team that was, that affected where the title went. So now, Chelsea, in this last bit of the season, play against both sides. So their results against them will have a say in terms of where the title will go this okay. season. Does that make so sense? What's, oh, what's, positive, sense what's, what's, what's positive for Chelsea there? But, so, uh, so uh, yeah, exactly Chelsea's great takeaway is that we player. get to beat somebody? They get no, to have a, a say player, in the title race. Nothing, no, we will not okay, as a player. Way, so Come on, Nate. You know, you want to win games. <laughs> you just want to win. Uh, you want to win the games. You, you play the game to win it. At least Nadem got the memo for positivity on this show, all right? <laughs> Manchester United didn't. If, I ever, need, if I ever need a lawyer, I'm hiring Nadem. I'll tell you what, Nadem <laughs> can't have been at that game tonight, the Sanchez <laughs> Pijuan, because he's usually Manchester United's lucky charm. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.